Welcome to Mac Connections, the podcast. Keeping connected and looking after yourselves is so important during these changing times. We trust the following conversation will provide some helpful guidance. If you have any concerns, please get in contact with staff in the Year 12 team. We want to be able to provide all the support we can. Our patron, St Mary of the Cross MacKillop, wrote in 1875, May God bless and keep you and give you courage. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this podcast is recorded. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present, and to the Aboriginal elders emerging. Episode 12, Sport and Mass, with Mr Kevin Ryan. Here is your host, Director of Wellbeing, Mr Andrew Exton. Welcome to another edition of the Mac Connections podcast. And today we've got Mr. Kevin Ryan, maths teacher extraordinaire and head of sport at McKillop College. So, Mr. Ryan, thanks for coming on board. The first question I want to ask is, um, first of all, how, do you, how have you felt you've gone through this period of remote learning? It's not something that we were expecting. So, from your own point of view, how do you think you've gone? Yeah, look, it's obviously been a, a massive challenge for all of us. Um, and I, I suppose the first time we just had to adapt. We didn't have much time to, to adapt and something we've never done before. And uh, you've just got to come up with ways of you know, being as um, far as you can and, and making sure that your students are going to benefit from it. And I think the second time around, you know, most of us were obviously a lot more adept at it and, and more prepared. Um, so it's definitely been a bit easier the second time. And, um, you know, having a, a better structure in place uh, for our students. Now, it seems to me that it's a different challenge for all subjects. And perhaps in the humanities area that I teach, it's more project-based, it's more ongoing learning, it's more, you know, the accumulation of information over time. Whereas maths is very much, you go into class, you introduce a concept, you have to do examples and, and go through that. It's a, It's far more interactive often for, for teachers and students. It would ima- I would imagine that doing it remotely has presented quite a number of challenges just in the way that you teach the content and kids get an understanding of the work. You're not, you're not able to go over to their desk and help them and that sort of stuff. Has that been a big challenge? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, there, there are days, I'm sure you've experienced this, there are days I'm, I'm teaching things and I feel like I'm talking to myself. You know, he's talking to this black screen. Uh, look, in some senses, you know, I'm lucky I've been able to share my screen and put up on the screen exactly what would be up on the on the board in the classroom, um, you know, and annotate it and add notes. And in some ways, I feel like I've been able to really um, be comprehensive and really thorough with that. And a lot of the students have said that they've really understood, you know, the concepts really well. But the hard part is, as you say, a lot of students don't feel confident enough sitting there in amongst their you know, 22 other peers to, to interrupt and say something. There's been the odd occasion where people ask questions, but I'm sure there are things that people aren't asking about that they would in the classroom, as you say, when I'm walking around the room. Uh, and the other thing I found really challenging is the feedback. I'm lucky I've had the time to really go through students' work thoroughly, but I just typed out an email to a student this morning. It took me about 20 minutes to, to say what I would have said in four or five minutes in the classroom. And maths is very hard to explain in words in an email. Because uh, often you're, you're pointing to things, looking at diagrams, and uh, there are a couple of questions I've said to this student. You know, I'm going to have to catch up later with Zoom because it was just too hard to explain over email. So that has been a challenge. Now, one question I wanted to ask you because it seems to me that during this period, school is focused only on what we do in the classroom. It's only been about work, and yet when we're physically at school, school to so many students is far more than just the work in the classroom. And I talk in your area of school sport and and the co-curricular activities that we run that are associated with sport i get a sense that we've come to understand that whether it be the arts whether it be sport is so important to the to the mindset the positivity of students and the fact that it's just study makes it really hard to motivate them have you have you sort of thought about that and got a sense of how important the extracurricular, the sport, is to the makeup of a school. Yeah, absolutely. It's the it's the number one thing I've missed personally this year. It's such a big part of my job, and it's made me probably made me realise how much I do love what I do. Um, and the greatest enjoyment is seeing our students 
go out and represent the school. You know, obviously, you know, we've both had a lot to do with our senior footy teams, for example, over the years. And I'm sure you've missed it as well. Just that, that different interaction with the students. And I know speaking to students in the short time we were there at the start of term two, um, how much students have really missed it. You know, and Nash Reynolds, who's in my maths class, for example, you know, just itching at the bit to get out and play footy. It's killing him not being able to play. You know, Rachel Kerr, one of the sports captains, you know, the really good basketball and netball, not being able to represent the school you know, in basketball, which would have been exciting for, for people like her. So there's no doubt, you know, things like sport, musicals and all those sorts of things are such a, an important part. And, and as you say, it breaks it up. It's not just about the study. And this year, unfortunately, it has been. And I really feel for those students, year 12s in particular, their last chance to represent the school and you know, this group of year 12 boys in soccer it's our, our strongest group we've had for a number of years you know con paganis and um brayden portelli and uh, all those sorts of boys who are really looking forward to this year and they're just devastated that they're not going to get their one last chance to, to play soccer and represent the school and i suppose from a point of view of the future and i think i wanted to try and make these very positively focused sir i think our students need to sort of be aware that schools will be doing everything possible, won't they, within the guidelines and within the rules to be able to get us back to being as normal as we can whenever we can be. I think you would be working behind the scenes and talking about how we're going to be able to manage those components of school when we get back to COVID normal or whatever it looks like. Yeah, definitely. I know SACs uh, are already doing a lot of work behind the scenes too. And, and it's just gonna change the whole um, concept, I suppose, that the little things that we're now gonna to have to take into account. We've got this, you know, there's always been a lot of things to think about going out, taking sports teams and on excursions and the whole safety aspect. But now we've got this you know, COVID element as well that we're gonna to have to take into account. And just little things like equipment, and uniforms and all sorts of things that we are gonna to have to look at. But yeah, we will be doing everything that we can to, to get back to normal. And, you know, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm sure we all are, that by February next year, that, um, when next year rolls around, that things will be um, a lot better than they are now and, and we can go back to you know, sort of some sort of normality in terms of playing sport in term one next year. Now, a couple of personal questions, Mr Ryan. You are a great consumer of sport, as I am. You might rival me, but I think I still might have, might, might have you across the board. You do. Um, the sporting television experience rather than the the watching experience and you have the benefit of being able to work at the mcg as well as you know an avid football follower of carlton and cricket in particular how's the how's the um television experience go for you are you enjoying it as much or is there a little bit of you that misses the the actual attendance and everything that goes along with it Oh, there's no doubt I've missed it. Like for me to think that this year I won't set foot in the MCG is, you know, hard to fathom. Um, I normally go to the MCG probably, I don't know, 40 times a year. Um, it's just, you know, it's a ritual and, and just the atmosphere. Like you can watch a game on television, but nothing beats being you know, in the crowd, you know, especially when there's 80, 90,000 there. Um, I really miss that. I'm sure thousands and thousands of people are really missing that. It's, it isn't the same. Um, and yeah, in some ways, this footy frenzy we've just been through, 20 consecutive nights, you know, sort of good in a way, but I think by about night 10, even I was not over it. There was a lot of one-sided, boring games that I turned off at quarter time, just couldn't watch it. I think you know, sometimes you can have too much. And finally, sir, you've clearly been voted as the best cricketer at McKillop for a long <laughs> period of time. There's no question about that. Not only voted, but have also basically communicated to everyone that you clearly are the best cricketer, but you've been rocked by soft tissue injuries over the last couple of years and um, you've really contemplated the end of your cricketing career on a number of occasions. I'm wondering if this little hiatus from being able to do the stuff that you're doing and get out and just play, I'm wondering if that means that the um, retirement plans are put on hold and if you can get out on the grass this year with the willow in hand that you'll be um, going around for another season. Yeah, at this stage I definitely am. Um, I, you know, I've missed not being able to get out and do as much. I'm still doing a lot of walking and everything, but you're right. My soft tissue injuries have been a worry, but that happens when you get to my age. But I did get through last season without missing a game, so that's a positive. And because I was able to do that, I am keen to, to go around again. We've just been told 
cricket season's been delayed to the 7th of November, so that's sort of six weeks later than normal. So, but even that at this stage may, may not happen. Um, we've just seen a whole footy season wiped out in you know, the local area, so we really don't know what's going to happen with cricket. But um, yeah, I, I'm hoping to play if uh, COVID lets me and if my body lets me. And finally, sir, we talk about all the things that have been taken away from us during this period. Is there anything that you think you've gained a skill or an ability or an appreciation of something? Is there something that you'll take away from this and saying, well, if I hadn't have gone through it, I probably wouldn't have learnt this or done this or appreciated this? Because I think it's important that we are positive about where we're going and the fact that for six months we haven't just completely lost everything, that we've actually gained some things out of it. So for you, what would that be? Um, well, I hadn't heard of Zoom at the start of this year, so that's, that's <laughs> been a new concept. I've gone from something I'd never used, never heard of before to, to using it multiple times a day. Um, and I think that you know, even something as simple as Zoom um, is going to be handy going forward. You know, things that we've, we've done in the past. You know, you know, an example is um, our SAC sports meetings. You know, the days I've had to drive to Merrymead an hour from school to have a meeting and you know, looking at what we've done this year, we might be able to just run some of those meetings on Zoom. So I think just the, the way of communicating with people uh, and even with students, you know, there might be days where, you know, if, if I happen to be homesick or I miss, you know, I'm out on a sports thing, I need to communicate with a small group of students. You know, we've got this option now um, that we hadn't even really thought of before. So it sort of opened up a whole new way of communication for us, I think. And the message to your students, sir, your further math students and year 12 students in terms of getting through the next period? Yeah, look, um, the majority of them have been fantastic, um, been really positive. It's been a, an amazing year um, for everyone, but in further maths in particular, um, our major sack for the year was set down for the 27th of April, which is now four months ago. Um, we didn't quite get to it the first time, so we, we moved on with the course and we put it in the background. We plan to do it week three of this term, so we spent the first two weeks preparing for it again and we're about we're down to the last lesson of vision we're about to go again and it got pulled away again so now uh, finally in a couple of weeks time after uh, mr kennedy's address the other night it looks like we're finally going to be able to get students in and, and get to this sack four months later so it's just it's been a challenge you know, having to keep chop, chopping and changing and you know, as of today i'm going to speak to my students in 15 minutes about um now we're going to stop what we've been doing for the last four weeks and now go back and start preparing for this sack for the third time. It's quite bizarre. But, um, yeah, all I've got to do is keep hanging in there. And as I said, most of them have been really positive um, and doing really well. And, and I think they'll all, they'll all get through this. Well, Mr Ryan, thanks for coming on. I do um, look forward to the time where we can be back at school and I can organise a training session and turn up late and get somebody else to actually <laughs> take it for me and then claim all the credit when the team wins. So... I'm very yeah, good at that and um, you're, you're very patient. The, definitely, definitely the match day coach, not the training coach. <laughs> you're very patient with me. So you take care. Um, I hope Carlton finished ninth this year for what it's worth. Um, and we'll finish you... above north, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks very much and uh, good luck and hope to see you in person really soon. Thanks for coming on board and um, giving us a bit of an insight into how you're travelling through this period of time. Thanks very much. No worries. Thank you, Mr. Oxford. Appreciate it. Take care. That brings us to the end of this episode. A reminder, if you do need any help, if you have any queries, questions or concerns, please contact a member of the Year 12 team. Be kind and look after yourself.